Hello and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today I'm going to show you how I painted up this Imperial Guard model in the style of a Vault Dweller from the Fallout game series. So to start off with, I primed the model black, as this will give us a nice even base coat for all of our colours to work off of. Now the first thing I'm doing is coming in with some Macragh blue. I'm going to paint all of the fabric on the model. So it's his jacket and his trousers. Catch them all with a couple of coats of Macragh blue. I recently painted a Space Marine in the style of a Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, and that's what inspired me to paint this Imperial Guardsman as a Vault Dweller. If you haven't watched that video, do recommend it. It's got some good guides on Rust and Flamer Burn. And after a couple of coats of Macragh Blue, you can see we've built up a nice solid base cover all over those jacket and trousers. So next I'm coming in with some Avalan Sunset. And for this, I'm going to paint the armour on the model. So that's this body armour here and the shoulder pads. Don't worry about the helmet, we will paint that later in a different colour. It's going to take a couple of coats to get a good solid base cover. Just work your way around, pick out all of that armour with a couple of coats of Avalan Sunset. I'm also painting his belt and support coming here down his back and around his waist. They also catch the shoulder pads with a couple of coats of Avalan Sunset as well. This contrast between blue and yellow will really make the model pop. And I'm also catching this bit of trim here at the bottom of his jacket. To be nice and neat, you don't want to get this over the blue, but if you do, you can come back in and paint over with some Macragh blue. So the yellow will take a couple of coats to get a solid cover, but keep your coats nice and thin, and in two or three coats, you'll get a solid yellow all over the armor and this trim. And so after a couple of coats, you've got a solid bright cover of Avalan Sunset. So now with some wire flesh, I'm going to paint the helmet of the model. As you can see here, I have removed all of the Aquilas as I was building the model. I just took them off with a craft knife because there isn't going to be Aquilas in the Fallout universe. Cover the helmet with a couple of coats of wire flesh till we get a nice solid base cover all over that helmet. I'm painting this in a different colour so it will look like it's a scavenged helmet, truly fitting of the Fallout universe. And then after a couple of coats, you can see we've got a nice solid cover of wire flesh on that helmet. Now with some Bugman's Glow, I'm going to paint any skin. So that's the face and the hands. Keep this nice and thin, be nice and neat. So you don't get this over any of the helmet or the other details. Just pick out the face and the hands with a couple of coats of Bugman's Glow. After a couple of coats, we've got a solid cover on all of that skin. There's just a couple of base coats left to apply. So first I'm coming in with some Corvus Black, and we're going to paint all of the gun casing. I'm also going to paint the grenades on his waist. and his boots as well. Just catch all of these areas with a couple of coats of Corvus Black. And now 
after that corvus black has dried there is just one final base coat left to apply and that is some lead belcher so for this i'm just applying it to some selected parts of the gun so the muzzle any metallic details the magazine a few bits of interest on the gun just catching those out with a couple of coats of lead belcher also going to paint his buckle here around his waist and the rings to the grenades as well and that's all of the base coats applied to the model so the next thing we're going to do is apply some shades. So first of all I'm coming in with some Reichland Flesh Shade and applying this to the skin. So it's just his face and his hands. Just get a light shade with Reichland Flesh Shade. And now with some known Oil I'm going to apply this to the helmet. Being careful not to get this over any of the skin. I'm also applying it all over the gun to both the casing and all the lead belcher. And then I'm going to apply it to all of the fabric. So it's the belt and the jacket and trousers and the grenades and boots as well. But I'm going to avoid putting it over the armor. We don't want to darken down the actual armor parts, just the fabric parts of the model. And with some Agrax Earthshade now, I'm just going to do a pin shade around the raised details of the armor. So it's this little bit here on the back, it's a couple of clasps on the shoulders as well. Doing a pin shade around the edge with some Agrax Earthshade just to add some definition to those areas. If you're enjoying the video, please press like. If you want more videos, press the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And with those shades now dry, you can see it's really added some definition to the model now. So now it's time to start highlighting. So first of all, I'm coming in with some McCrag blue. I'm gonna highlight the blue fabric. So for this, I'm applying it where the shades didn't settle. So all of these raised areas, coming in with some McCrag blue, and then like here, where there's some shade settled in the middle of these areas, coming in on either side of it with the McCrag blue, leaving that Nuln Oil in the recesses. So for this, just work your way around the model, highlighting all the raised areas, but leaving that Nuln Oil in all of the recesses. And take your time by leaving the paint nice and thin as well, it can help build up those transitions as we work towards a nice highlight all over the fabric. And with that McCrag blue applied, you can see it has brightened up those areas of fabric on the model. So next I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of McCrag blue and Altdorf Guard blue. And with this, I'm applying it in the middle of those areas that we just applied the McCrag blue. I'm gonna focus this slightly towards the more raised areas and the edges of all of the areas we just highlighted. So you just work your way around again placing a little bit of this mix in the middle of all the areas that we just applied our previous step. And with that dried, I come in now with some pure Altdorf Guard Blue. And I'm applying this once again in the middle of those previous steps, working towards the most raised areas and pronounced details. Just applying a little bit of pure Altdorf Guard Blue in the middle of where we just applied that mix. With 
that Altdorf Gar Blue applied because it's really added to that tone and brightened up those areas of fabric. So now I'm coming in with some Calgar Blue. I'm just going to do an edge highlight on all the sharpest folds of this fabric. So wherever you've got a sharp fold, put a real thin line of Calgar Blue at the top of those folds and most raised areas as an edge highlight. It's worth taking the time at this stage to make sure you catch all of these areas because so much of this model is this fabric. It's worth taking the time to make sure you highlight it really well. And with that Calgar blue applied, that is the fabric highlighted. You can see it's really added some interest and brightness to that uniform. So now I'm coming with some Bugman's Glow. I'm gonna start highlighting the skin. So much like with the fabric, I'm leaving the shade in the recesses and all the raised areas. I'm coming in on either side and applying a little bit of Bugman's Glow to find all the raised details and apply some Bugman's Glow, leaving the flesh shade in all the recesses. And with that Bugman's Glow applied, started to add some definition to the skin. So now I'm coming in with some Cadian Flesh Tone and applying this towards the most raised and prominent areas of the skin. So I'm focusing this onto areas like the nose, sort of the eyebrows, the cheeks, the lips, and the fingers of the hand as well. So I'm applying this into the middle of the Bugman's Glow, but focused to the areas that the light would catch the most. And with that Katie and the Flesh Tone applied, we're really adding the tone and definition to that skin. So now I'm just coming in with some Kislev Flesh, just putting a small spot on all the most raised and prominent details. So things here like the nose, the bottom lip, the knuckles to the fingers, and the fingertips as well. Just give them a small spot of Kislev Flesh. And with that Kislev Flesh applied, that's the skin highlighted. The next thing I'm gonna do is paint in the eyes to the model. So for this, I'm coming in with some Abaddon Black first. I'm gonna sink this into the recesses of the eye sockets, being nice and neat, trying not to get this over any of the skin we've painted and highlighted. And then with some white scar, I'm gonna put a thin line of white within that black we just applied. Then with some Abaddon Black again, I'm just going to put a small vertical line in through that white that will act like a pupil. And that's the skin and face painted. So now I'm going to come in with some Warboss Green and I'm going to do an edge highlight around the helmet. So this is just on the sharpest areas most pronounced details and just put a thin line of Warboss Green. So take your time at this stage, make sure you catch all of the edges and prominent lines of that helmet with an edge highlight of green. And that's the helmet highlighted. So the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight the gun casing in any black. So for this, I'm coming in with some Mechanica Standard Gray first. And I'm gonna do a chunky highlight all the way around the edge of the gun casing. So just follow all of those edges, all those sharp points 
and put a chunky edge highlight of Mechanica standard grey around them. And on the boots I'm going to do the same with any raised pronounced edges, folds and putting a chunky highlight of Mechanica standard grey. And on the grenades, I'm just putting some spots on those raised parts of the grenades. And with that Mechanica standard grey applied, you can see we've got a chunky edge highlight to all of the areas we painted black. So now I'm coming in with some Dawnstone. And for this, I'm applying a thin edge highlight within all the areas we just painted with Mechanica standard grey. By keeping this nice and thin, you'll allow the Mechanica Standard Grey to show through on the sides while you're catching the very edge with a thin line of Dawnstone. I also do this to the boots as well, putting a little bit of Dawnstone on all the edges where we applied the Mechanica Standard Grey before. And with that applied, that's the boots and the grenades highlighted. But I'm going to do one final step on the gun casing. That's coming in with some Administratum Grey. I'm doing a spot highlight all the most pronounced corners of the model. So everywhere there's like a sharp angle or a 90 degree corner, just put in a small spot of Administratum Grey as a spot highlight. And that's the gun highlighted. So the next step now is I'm just going to highlight the yellow. So for this to start with, I'm coming in with some Uriel Yellow. I'm highlighting all of the belts and this trim around the bottom with a thin line of Uriel Yellow. So keep this nice and thin, just work on the sharpest edge with a thin line of Uriel Yellow as an edge highlight. Now for the armour, I'm doing sort of a chunky highlight with the Uriel Yellow, which will add an extra colour in here like we did with the gun before. So just work your way around the edge, apply a chunky edge highlight of Uriel Yellow to all of the armour. And now with some flash gits yellow, I'm gonna do a thin edge highlight on all of the armor panels where we just did the Uriel yellow. You don't need to worry about the belt. That's fine with just the first eye highlight. But by applying this second one here to the armor, it really gives it that sharper look and really makes it stand out and adds interest to the model. So just apply an edge highlight to all the sharp points all over the armor. With that applied, that is the armor highlighted on the model. Now I'm coming in with some Cantor blue and I'm gonna paint the vault marking on the shoulder pads. So I'm going with 101 on this one, which is the vault from Fallout 3 to tie in with the Space Marine I painted in a previous video. You can put whichever vault number from your favorite Fallout game on the shoulder pads of this vault dweller. with 
those volt numbers applied, there's only one highlight left to do on the model, and that's storm hose silver, which I'm going to apply to the metal parts of the gun. So, round here, around the magazine, just an edge highlight on all the sharpest edges of the gun, and any other metal areas like the belt, just catch them with a little bit of storm hose silver. And with that applied, that is all the highlights done. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of rust just to give it that fallout look. So I'm coming in with some Sterling mud first, using an old paintbrush. I'm picking some areas where water might settle on an old beaten up scavenged helmet and applying a bit of this texture paint to give us some texture for the rust to work from. So just pick a few spots and apply a bit of Sterling mud. I'll also apply a little bit here to the stock of the gun just to make that rusty as well. And once that Sterling mud has dried, we've applied the texture to the areas that we're going to apply some rust. So now I'm coming in with some dirty down rust and applying this all over the areas that we applied the Sterling mud, plus a bit around the outside. Do this with different thicknesses, apply some of it thick, some of it a bit thinner, and you'll get different rust textures and colours with the way this paint works. And once you've applied this paint before it's dried, if you wet your brush off and dab some water in, that also adds more colours and more interest to the model as well. And there we go, that's the rust applied. It's really added a beaten, worn, dirty, rusty look to that helmet and the stock of the gun. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this Fallout Vault Dweller. Let me know in the comments below what's your favourite Fallout game. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And happy painting.